Hi guys, Elamira Meet, everybody, it's Michelle Marie Tony. I wanted to show some quick footage, mainly for Planet Moose. She asked me a lot about the, the setup here in the studio. And um, I thought we would do some clips here and then go and explain how the studio works, what the studio does before I go out. Um, so, this is going to be a technology video. So, if you are not into technology, I'll leave this one behind. If you are, you might like it, you may not. So, let's get into the nuts and the bolts, or at least as far as I can show you on camera. Um, so, we have a couple things we're going to show you. And let's just clear some things off the table here. I was working on another project. Right now, so um, right now I'm just charging a tablet. Okay, so let's get started. All right, first thing is you will notice we have, as I said, two turntables. This is part of the music part of the program for Silver Moon Radio. This is a Cross Sea Voyager second generation. This is a Cross Sea Voyager third generation okay what's the difference the second generation has the switch that allows you to play audio to bluetooth as well as audio from bluetooth whereas the second generation like the first generation only can send turntable audio um, or Bluetooth audio into the turntable. It doesn't have the ability to send sound the other way. Okay? So that's one big difference right there. So if you ever um, find a second generation a turntable, and I'll see if I can zoom in on it so you can see it better here. Um, you can see here that it has a switch that only has two positions. That is a second generation and first generation Voyager. Um, the difference between the first generation Voyager and the second generation Voyager is the splint is a little different. Um, the turntable mechanism is a little different. And also the first generation uses a 12 volt power adapter and the second and third generation use five volt power adapters. But otherwise, the case is about the same and um, it um, it does the same basic thing. These two are connected into this turntable mixer here. Um, this is how we set the crest fader for the turntable one and two. And let me just zoom out here so you can see the same here. Turntable one and two here, the crest fader one and two. There's also a volume level here for a Bluetooth input. I never tried this. I don't know how it works. Also can play um, a USB device, maybe a, even a small little flash drive as well. Okay, I never really used this. I just bought it for the turntables. Well, where does all this go to? Let's close these covers here. They connect into this mixer over here and this is on this channel here and it says mp3 which it's not it's just i didn't change the label this phono is connected to that turntable over there so that we can play records on that one as well so we really have effectively three turntables you will see that we have spaghettis with the wiring that goes to a variety of devices. They, um, this is the heart of the audio system. This is one of the two cameras up there on the top of the screen. So this is one of the two turntables there. That's one of the cameras. We finally have a match set of monitors. These two are the same manufacturers. The difference was this one didn't come with a stand. I didn't need a stand because I already had one. And um, you can see the stand is attached to a pole mount mounted on the pole. 
so that I can see and show my desk. And also we have the MPEG Stream Deck down there at the bottom. Here's my good old Microsoft Explorer PS2 trackball mouse. This is a compact PS2 keyboard as well. Both are connected in. It, this does have USB, but I'm not using it USB. I'm using it as a PS2. This is PS2. This is connected into an adapter on my M1 Mac Mini um, with that connection. And we how is all the power cords routed? Well, they're kind of all over the place. There's one power point down there. This is a standard British PS 1363A. I can't really put it on the wall to show it to you over there. Yes, it's got a 13 amp fuse in that. So we can... And... Last but not the least, let's take a look at the other side of the network. Oh. This is the other camera on the wall here. And it's just a standard micro US um, composite video camera mounted on the wall and it's connected by an adapter that converts it to USB. This is one of our external hard drives. Down here in this rat's nest course, that's red box. Uh, is there aid to digital convert analog to digital converter? UVA 222. Then we have a CD burner right there. And we have the 2019 Mac Mini. The sweat's nest over there with all the cords hanging on the back is the thing that connects all the USB accessories to make this thing work. I will be honest, the one thing I truly do miss is with the 2009 Mac Pro was everything plugged right into the back of that versus this one. And we have cameras over here. We have two of them. Here's a closer look at the turntable here. This is a Gerard 210, 1962 to 1965. I'm not sure which year it is. Uh, with the original factory plinth on it. And um, <clears throat> it is connected with a home line adapter to ceramic to magnetic. And that's going through a RIAE magnetic preamp. Goes to studio mixer, which then loops the sound back to that little mix amplifier right there. The feed sound to that speaker, the one behind that stack of speakers. Then, this camera here is a European PAL camera, and this is the one that's looking at the Gibbon tree. And, uh, so it's, uh, unfortunately it's kind of hard to... But we're not done! We have one more camera! When people donate, when I don't forget to write them down, they get a slip of paper here on the giving tree, and we change them out once a month. There's the picture the noodles made of me. Um, this is the other camera that points out to the street below, so you can see what it looks at. Again, this is NTSC. That one's PAL. And... Uh, Giving Tree is unique because all these lights are powered by a USB hub. The Angel has its own power adapter right there and the um, plug there. And everything's powered from a single power rick. We kind of simplified it a bit. It used to be a lot more complicated. Um, and... <laughs> This room is a studio too. There's my couch and all my stuffies. And there's lights here. And uh, 
So it's pretty much how it is. Get another microphone over here connected to the first mixer. Ooh. And uh, that's it. That's really all of it. Um, hope you enjoyed this short little tour. Um, do I miss the 2019 Mac Pro? I mean, the 2009 Mac Pro. Well, it had bad capacitors. And um, they were really tiny, and I didn't know how to fix them. So if I could have kept it working, I would have. But with the increase in electric rates in Connecticut, I don't think I could have kept using it anyway. It was just getting to be too expensive. And so I just went, well, it's too expensive to run it. I can't run it anymore. So I was retiring it anyway. Remember, I bought that machine over there specifically because I wanted something that was fast, energy efficient, and worked. And so that's why we bought that model, so that allows us to efficiently use the power of Apple Silicon to do more work for less energy. And that's important in this day and age of high utility powers. Oh yeah, the TV. Um, yes, that works. Um, right now, the two speakers go with the speaker that's sitting over there on the um, cabinet. I gotta put a new turntable in that. Um, those PCs over there, um, the big, tall, tall case, they don't make any ones like that anymore. I'm gonna, I modified that some time ago and put an ATX motherboard in there. Um, but I need to uh, upgrade it again because, um, I need to, um, put a newer, maybe like an i5 in there or something like that. The question is, is it worth it? Oh, I don't know. That's a great question, though. That's definitely a project to be considered for the future. But anyway, that's it. I just wanted to show you that. So, see you guys later. Bye-bye. <laughs>